everybody, it is Cinnamon Coney, your Archer Bunch, and I'm going to show you how you can paint a really fun rose-lined waterfall. I know this one's kind of crazy, but it's actually a really gorgeous image. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me do this show by, like, tracking me with cameras and making sure all the cables are plugged in and then things turn on and turn off when they're supposed to, and pretty much all the part of it that brings this streaming to you. On top of that, he does try to watch the chat. If you've got questions tonight, uh, we have kind of a groovier vibe on Friday nights. The paintings tend to be a little bit easier, and uh, the project's kind of got more of a party vibe, but still be sure to put your questions in all caps so that we can see them because the chat can go fairly fast i i don't know do we have any gnomes to notify anybody i don't know i don't think we're I, we may be out of gnomes until tomorrow that's no worries because i'm trying a secondary notification system uh notification system for everybody i'm going to try sending you guys emails with the painting that we're doing the traceable and the materials list for that night like the day before so you can have all of that even if you won't have a hard time finding it on the website and it's something you can have there. And all you've got to do for that is to be signed up for our newsletter. It would be free mm -hmm. like the, te like the text, but international. <laughs> so I'm working on a nine by 12 surface tonight and I'm going to start with it painted black. I'm going to use a number 26 Ruby satin. Jennifer Sweeney says she's a three hoop painter. So I know we're going to see Jennifer Sweeney for the rose on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, You'll see me there. If you want to see the full color list in the description down below, you can check that down there. If you want to see that, you might also have it. If you signed up for our newsletter, check your inbox. It should have the reference, the traceable and the materials there as well. I don't know. You guys have to let me know if you like this new system of notifying you. Now we like to do uh, wishes and intentions and positive thoughts. So uh, uh, I noticed in the chat that Tammy said she was just sort of looking for something to help lift her spirits a little bit. And then I wanted to wish strength to her and her family as they are going through personal tragedy. And then from earlier chat today, from the five minute video this morning, I wanna send love, light and healing to Rebecca. Uh, gratitude that Jane was not eaten by a bear. And then I have a very special personal wish that uh, that uh, sisters be at peace. <laughs> All sisters everywhere find peace and joy and harmony because that's important. All right. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Patty Hoffman. Norman needs a raise. He does. <laughs> Norman well, does need I, a raise. And what, thank you, Stephanie Willis. What I would say is that there's now... Um, there's some different divisions of mm -hmm. gnomes. Yeah. And, you know. You guys paint your canvas black with us. Just paint it black. Just paint it black. Then we're going to talk because it just takes a minute to paint the canvas black. Yeah. Yeah, keep talking. Oh, well, there's well, a division just, of films. Well, what I would say is that they've banded together and they now cost more unless you negotiate directly with the gnome brokerage oh, service. Oh, my goodness. So, so again, I'm hoping uh, if you guys have signed up for my newsletters, usually we send them out like, I don't know, I mean, every couple of months. How do you get the newsletter? If you get it, huh? How do you get it? You got to go to the website. And I guess when you make an account, you can make, have opt right. in for the well, newsletter. As soon, as soon as you sign up on our website for an account you sign up, then you'll be, you'll, during that process, it'll, it'll ask you if you want to be in the newsletter. You have to select, unselect it, but by default, it will, it will add you to our newsletter. So just go create an account on our website. By the way, if you didn't want to be in our newsletter, this would be your heads up for that as well. And please sign into the newsletter because you want that information. Um, they're a total thing for me to write. And I want to make sure that that information is getting out uh, and, and being received because I know I don't love getting a lot of newsletters. So I would only, but I love some of my newsletters. Like I love my Two-Face newsletter. I would never, ever opt out of their text notifications or newsletters. Mm -hmm. But some other ones... Uh, I, I don't even know how I got opted in and I keep trying to opt out and they keep coming. I don't, I don't know what's happening. What size canvas is that? This is a nine by 12 surface. You can do this particular project on any size surface, mm. any size surface at all. And it's a very interesting set of colors. Um, it kind of reminds me of Waverly way back from the day. Little old school Waverly vibe going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
used to be super, super, super into. Not that I'm over the chins, clearly, but, <laughs> you know, I like me a repeating flower pattern. There we go. We have a black surface. You do? We do. We have a black surface. And catch up on the chat. See if I see any questions. Oh, Diane says, got my email 10 hours ago. Excellent. So, you guys, if you're into the newsletter, you'll be receiving a few. Uh, they'll be short, really short and to the point. Uh, emails from me a week. And they'll just be about uh, the Watercolor Wednesday and the Friday, Saturday class. And a catch up on Monday over all the short videos that'll be coming out. And that'll just make sure you have your materials, your traceables and any of that stuff. So if you're having trouble finding any of that on the website, you'll be able to find that in the emails. It's just another location. I know I drop it in the groups. I know I post online. I know I put it like on Pinterest, but it's just another location that you guys can find it because what I don't want you to do is be frustrated and not do the project because you couldn't find a resource. And sometimes resources go missing online. But if it's in your email, it belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You have it. All right, I'm going to dry this. All right. So if you, uh, we saw a question in there from uh, Chloe asking about uh, reselling your paintings. There's a big, pro big policy stuff on that in general. If you're just reselling a painting that you've done and you're crediting Cinnamon as your teacher and this is a student work, that's totally normal. If what you're doing is painting paintings and trying to resell them, that's, we don't generally support that kind of work. So uh, it just sort of depends on how you're wanting to use it. But if you email support at theartsherpa.com, we'll get you some help with that, some clarity on what you can and can't do. We have a licensing program if you're wanting to re you know, teach some of those things. So we do have programs for how you, would, uh, how you could use our artwork. But uh, for information, yeah, just email us there. Yeah, he has that. That's exactly the deets on that. We got all kinds of stuff all sorts of different licensing options. So I see Diane got her big email. She's talking about the big email. So you guys have two newsletters if you're signed up. One very large one, and that one tells you about a massive free class that you can sign up for that's totally free and it's amazing. Let's you know uh, all about the new taster sessions and where that playlist, playlist is. And also um, has some other really cool information like a sneak peek at the 13 days of Halloween. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, some of it. That's the big one. And then there's one just about tonight with the reference and the waterfall. I'm going to come down here about three inches, I'd say. Oh, is that three or is that two and a half? My, my thing is so dirty. It's two and a half. <laughs> my, my thing is so dirty. That looks about, I could go down even maybe to three, I think, with room. Let's take that across. Two and a half to three inches is what I say. And I'm going to come across the top. And this is honestly just the top of my fall. Mm. Just the top of my fall. So you're halfway to your waterfall right now. Don't you feel amazing? I hope you guys feel amazing. I'm catching up with the chat. <sighs> All right. So once you have this, um, the next thing I think that you should do to help you is give yourself a little mark here and here. I want my, and I'll measure it for you in inches if I can see them. Okay, it looks like it's just about three and a half inches wide. And then I'm going to make a straight down line. And that's just to help me not have my fall somehow defy gravity like they like to. And then I'm going to make a little line at the bottom to say this is where my fall ends. Now, I'm doing this sort of incremental thing, not because in my painting practice I make these lines, but I'm always trying to think of ways, if you're unfamiliar with the process, how you can help yourself avoid the common mistakes that you might make as a beginner and some of the pitfalls. Now, I'm going to guide myself with a little curved down line. All right, this line kind of curves down because this fall is one of those ones where the water folds over and comes in. Now in a garden, maybe this is a very small waterfall, or maybe these are giant roses. I really didn't feel like it was necessary to uh, sort of explain it. And I'm going to make a little S curve going off. That's the little stream, river, whatever that is that's going away. 
And there you go. You've now sketched a waterfall in. Hmm. Um, when you get more familiar with this, you'll be able to freehand these in easily. But sometimes in the beginning, that can be a little challenging. I'm going to put out burnt sienna. Nice reddish brown. Just look for a reddish brown in your paint kit. You know, you don't always have to have the exact colors that I have. You know, this is a phthalo green. This is a deep foresty green with a nice kind of little blue hint to it. I'm going to need a lot more than that. I'll move the picture in picture for you. Will you? Uh-oh. I didn't even see it there. I could, I could have just gone down here. I'm really sorry. I'm so, I will try to work around it. I could just move the paint over. No, it's fine. All right. It doesn't matter. I will move that down there. All right, so I've got that there, and I do want to put out, there's just a bit, there's just a hint of white in that. I'm going to put that out there for right now. And we're going to paint just kind of this background space here, and I'm going to do this. I think I'll just start with the green and brown. I'm going to want more green than brown. I'm going to make a nice kind of deep color, and then I'm going to get a smidge, smidge of white into it, because I just want to see it. I don't want it to go mint. I want it to be quite rich and dark. If I add too much white, it'll go mint on me. Hmm. And I don't want a mint fall. And I'm going to just brush that up and back. The canvas is quite dark, so that helps create a depth in the paint. Now, if your green is so transparent that it's streaking, you may need to do your coats twice, and don't forget the part where you add a little white pigment to it. Hmm. Right? White and, pigment, huh? Well, because white pigment sometimes has more opacity than maybe any other color in your paint kit, even if oh. you're working with an inexpensive paint kit. That'll be your most opaque pigment well, in anybody's kit. And it won't affect the color adversely? Well, it's, it adversely is strong. You can see when I add more white, it goes more mint. But if you're just doing it a little bit like I'm doing here, it's going to lift it enough for you to see the color, but not substantially change the color. However, it could be the difference between this working or not working on any level when you're going to paint it. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm going to put this to the side. Always rinse your brushes out and lay them flat between painting sessions. You don't want your acrylic paint to dry on there. I see Vicki Wenham on my TV on YouTube, Cinnamon's mouth and words are not in sync, and I don't mean the band. Uh, right. If you just uh, probably have to refresh, it may be the... Trying to play um, with her out of sync. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> yeah, try refreshing your page. It I'm going to add like some cad yellow to the mix. We appear to be synchronized here. I'm going to come right here and add some cad yellow to the mix. And begin to paint in uh, my waterfall. So I've got this little green and brown over here. They're lovely together. And I can add a bit of my cad yellow. It stays very much in that family. But you can see that it has a little bit more of that yellow into it. I'm going to bring this down. With on the edge of my number eight cat's tongue. By the way, I forgot to mention hmm. you can win one of these tonight. Can you? How I did you told do that? you would know that if you had your email because that's where the early contest entry was. Is it? So uh, there's a link in your email to the contest entry. I'm sure uh, Mod Cad Red will drop the link. All you've got to do is fill out the Google Doc. The answer is my favorite color is purple and my favorite animal is a unicorn. Um, so you would just answer that you've got to live on planet earth and you have to be present when we call your name to win, but you don't need to buy anything or do super chat or anything like that. There's no other steps besides filling out that form. So, uh, if Mod Cad Red or John, cause they both have the link, um, can drop the link into that chat. You guys can have a chance to win a brush. I think we can. Obviously, it's a void where prohibitive. It is in no way associated with YouTube or the platform. Mm -mm. Nope. It's not an official YouTube anything. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. I'm going to I come do down believe. here. Where did it go? And across. I'm going to make a downward V, guys. 
a little downward V. I have a nice little deal. And I'm going to put out a little, a little, I could do black again, but I think I'm going to put out my phthalo blue. Mm. Yeah, I think it'll look nicer. Let's see if that's it. So all, all you got to do is, you know, fill out the form on there Paste and we it. will randomly pick a winner and then we will announce the, right the winner. I'm going to take the blue. I'm just going to use this in place of the black. I hope that Google form was it, right? It was a Google form. Did you send, did you send the one for the 18th? Because I gave you all of the forms. I but you guys so. are welcome to enter any of them. <laughs> It just said edit on the end of it, so I'm like, Arr! hopefully nobody can edit it. Yeah, you just gave him the, the thing to edit. Well, no, but see, when I went on it, it didn't give it to me. It didn't? No. Uh, Mod Cat Red, maybe you delete yours. Mod Cat Red has like, given the link to the contest. Don't make okay. her job harder. <laughs> Don't do that, man. So what we want is kind of like a V that's happening downward, right? Kind of a weird shape, kind of a weird thing, but we give that as the base beginning. I'm gonna get back into my brown and green. You could use a round brush here. You could use a bright brush. Any of those will be okay. And I'm gonna put a lot more white onto my brush. I'm gonna come across the top. It was a Google Google Docs thing. It they no one else can edit it but me. Oh, thank goodness. It's just the the if I go to the page, it automatically defaults me to the edit page. Oh, thank goodness. Just because of, you know, the type well, of Well, this I... was suggested by a community member who had uh, done some other uh, entries into some other contests and said this might work better than our raffle copter, so we thought we'd give it a try. Mm. And since I could email you the link in your uh, email, I thought that that would work okay. I'm going to just bring this down, just white, and I'm just going to stroke downward. doesn't need to be perfect. And you can see where there's a little bit of that blue there. It can pick up some of that color. We'll just pull that waterfall down. A nice little thing to do. Well, it's nice for me. I enjoy it very much. You can come in and add a little green yellow if you want. Because it's picking up all the things that are around it. And then we'll come back again with the highlight that really, really pulls it into its space. Now, we're going to go back to brown and green. And we're going to come here. And we're going to make our S curve. Our curve is wider as it goes off the surface. And then it narrows as it comes back. I can get a little yellow into my brush and even a little white and come in the middle and let the color blend on the canvas. I do want to fix that little break there. I want it to be a smoothish line. Yeah, that's a smoothish line. Smoothish. A very Ish. technical term in art. So uh, this is a global contest. You can be living anywhere. So uh, we, you, it's great if you're 18 and, you know, void where prohibitive is not allowed in your area. But other than that, and you not on the moon, please, because we don't deliver to the moon. Yet. <laughs> uh, Marilyn says, thanks for the, the email giveaway. So much easier. Always have a hard time finding the right links. Marilyn, thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. That feels so good. I am really, I've been racking my brain lately about, you know, all the feedback and how I can do things better. I'm grabbing some just white. And so it's really great to hear that anything I've been doing is going uh, helpful, is working. I'm going to pull my white down. Now, here's a little trick what I like to do. I load up the brush like this where it's kind of loaded to this edge corner here. And then I just... And I just pull down and let the brush sort of feather it out. I can always come in with the toe of the brush where I have more control, but this lets me get some white or white about it. Just pulling it. You can see where it's like there's a little curve, like implying that it's flying down. Mm-hmm. 
And then I can go on the little toe. And then I can kind of come down here. Maybe a little bit on the outside edge. Okay, we're just pulling that little water down. There we go. That looks pretty yeah, it's nice. Just, it's pretty nice. It's just pretty fun. You can just be sure to leave some of this dark, which shows where your water is folding in. You can pretty much do anything else, and you want the water to be pulling for it. And I lost my rag. I don't know what to do now, John. You lost your rag. I'm thwarted completely. I, could, right. I suppose Hold I could do on. the paper towels. <laughs> I am completely and utterly thwarted by loss of towel. Loss of towel does me in. Kathy, oh. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, mm. and I love, I see uh, IRDVCTRA101 saying, these brushes are a game changer, and that makes me feel good. Because I am really proud of them. I like them very much. So I'm going to get one of my Art Sherpa fans. You could do this or a Cambridge, and I'll show you kind of like both of these. Um, but what you want is a firm bristle. So this is hog, and this is a synthetic filament. If you're super unfamiliar with fans, good news. <laughs> we just did a series of seven videos about them that are five minutes long to give you a crash course in it. So you don't have to like be too overwhelmed or too busy with all of it. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to get a little of... My white onto this brush, and what you're gonna see me doing is thoroughly working this into the brush. Thoroughly. Yeah, and I'm going to just sort of wiggle my handles down and I'm wiggling some foam. It is foamy. It's misty foamy. Misty foamy. Misty foamy. A little bit of a dry brush, and I just wiggle it back and forth, and I'll come back with some splatters. And that'll be like what makes it work there. Please don't splatter my lenses. I'm going to try not to splatter your lenses. I can guarantee nothing. And then I can come back. Oh, I was told you I was going to do both the uh, thing and hog just to show you the difference. Show me. Right. Hog is just a little bit different in that you can kind of come in and maybe like <gasps> do a heavier little stipple. So any of those oh, will work. Oh, yeah. But the other thing that I can do is I can get it a little bit wet. And I have a splatter brush, but you can also flick your fan right. to do splatter. I need more water on it than that. But you do have to have it kind of wet. Splatter down, not up to the lenses. I have, yeah, no, it's fairly controlled. It's messy on my fingers, so you can get a lot of splatter that way as well. Either one of those, when it's all done, will look really good. Kind of a busy, bustly little bit of kit and then you can we'll, always come we'll back we'll see if we can redrop some more links here with your little we'll brush continue to drop the links and you can just can. play and push up some of this color to say you know control it right you have a lot of options have you and i may re-splatter at the end i just wanted you to see it and look how messy my hand is you have very messy hands i have messy hands messy, i think messy. that's a side effect of splattering i thought i was gonna need a round but i do not today mm -mm -mm. I don't, but the first thing I'm going to do is my leaf. And leaf? again, you're in luck because I demo the leaf stroke at Monday's class <laughs> at the beginning of the week. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our green and a little bit of our brown. I'm going to make that deep color. Come in and get a little yellow into it. And up here, we're going to just start putting some base leaves. These strokes are like a comma. And they just really help me get a little bit of botanical. I'm going to come down this way, babe. You can see just putting in some leaves. We can always come in and fill in a little bit later. And I'm going to let John kind of get in on this. I'm, I'm going to curve this little stroke. So can you see how it's like a little comma? The pressure's at the beginning and I release at the end. I see it. You see it? I seize it. I'm going to splatter again over this for sure. Just to layer my splatter so some of it's on top of the leaves. Now, how do you know where to put them? Well, in that I pre-painted it. <laughs> it's very <laughs> helpful. 
But you're generally not. what I do is I put them in, like even before I prepaint something, I might put a few of them in, layer some roses, and then see where there is a large hole in my composition mm. and then come back. I'm going to get a lot more yellow on this one, and I'm going to come here and create a couple right there. It can be nice to come back with a lot more yellow into some of these, right? Yeah. Kind of brighten them up a little bit if they need it. Not everyone, just some. Not everyone. Just not some. all. Not all. Let's come across to this side. And these are just little commas that look like leaves. Aren't they convenient little commas to look they like are. a leaf? So polite of them. You know, and if you're not sure where your flower is going to go, you can put a few more leaves in so it's very, very centered in its little flowers. Come down here. I think I want some more white into that. Just this pulls into the whole thing. There we go. Few leaves there. Yeah. Some right there. And that doesn't mean that I won't add more. It just means that those are the ones that I've got. And then now I'm going to do the flowers. This is going to go faster than you think. So if moderator Cad Red, you guys have hang five on. minutes to enter, and then she's going to close it and pick a winner. Got to hang on to your brushes. Hang on. Um, Allison Trejo says, what kinds of paint do you recommend? So I have a blog on my website that talks about that, but I'll go over this briefly. There's several brands that I like. I like my heavy body acrylic paint, and there are companies that I think do it really well and treat their customers really well and have consistent, good customer service and consistent quality. Mm -hmm. So there is, of course, Sennelier and Golden Artist Colors. There is Holbein. There is M. Graham. Um, there is PBO and there is Amsterdam. There's like a whole little grouping of them that, that are both professional and student. It's not just one or the other. I think in craft paints, I think Deco, the mm -hmm. Deco Americana series is preferable to others. And that's again, customer service, product quality and consistency is what that's about. It doesn't mean that other people don't love other paint companies and they don't, they don't paint with them and are happy, but I talk to 600,000 people. So if a company gets spotty on customer service, mm -hmm. I'm going to hear about it and they're going to drop out of my recommended list. And that has happened more than once, Yep. right? Like if 30 of you, I'm not even that mean about it. <laughs> If a grip of you are like treated badly, boom, 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 they get bumped from a recommended list to the list of brands that I acknowledge but do not recommend. Mm. But it's really just based on how you guys are treated That's all true. the time in every way. Be nice to everyone. All right. Now, remember, if you'd like to win the brush, you've got to be here when we announce your name. And that's also helpful for doing the painting. Now, I'm going to put out two of my favorite colors. I'm going to put out quinacridone magenta. See, this is a Holbein color. Every paint company makes this color, but this particular is Holbein. And then the next one I'm going to use is going to be Sennelier. I think it's important to remember that, um, and I think I've put out some gold, I put out Artist Loft Level 3. Oh, that's the other brand I really like. It's newer, so sometimes I forget to put it in my thing. Mm. I'm not saying Artist Loft Level 1. That is not getting my recommendation. Artist Loft Level 3 is. Mm. Like it a lot. Like yes. A lot. That looks like this tube. See, it has the 3 on it. Avoid the hold 1. On, hold on a Get the 3. Oh, sorry. There we go. Avoid the oh, no 1. You want the 3. The 3 is great. A great. Great, 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 great. Hmm. So I'm going to get that. I've got Cad Red Medium and Quinacridone Magenta, and I've got some white hair. And I've got to put out some Deoxazine Purple. Just a bit. Just a touch. Yeah, I'll put it right here. I seem to have an open. I'm now looking like what's over my head. What room do I have? That'll just give me a real deep magenta to kind of start with and build up on. I'm scooting forward. I just lost my paper towels. What is going on with me? Any more? Yes. I get them. Just, just off. 
Look, you have a whole roll. Uh, thank you for the link in the comments. My email has gremlins. Yeah, we will always link, mm. so especially if we're running a giveaway. The, there, I will give away the answer in the show, so you don't have to know it beforehand. I do put, I tend to put things in you might be able to know if you watch us a lot. But we're going to give the answer during the show, so you can just go enter right then, and then we're going to pick. If the winner isn't there, then we will pick another winner. Mm -hmm. So be here. We shipped out a bunch of winners today. It was we very did. exciting. So many. Oh, did I dry this? I need to dry that. I need to. Okay. The reason I'm drying this is the green and red is going to make a dull brown color, and that'll be in an interesting video later, but for this, you don't want it. Right. So make sure you guys have entered into the contest. I'm going to go over here and make sure that there's little entries and we're all good in there. Make over and make sure. So thank you guys for coming and joining us. It's been really nice having everybody here today. It's kind of one of those much more chiller, you know, Friday classes. I'm going to do a thing with my fan brush. A thing? Here. Well, I got a thing I can do with my fan brush I really like. Which what can is, you do? I can really improve the look of the waterfall with a fan. Because they do that fan down water really well. Looks all waterfally. Mmm. You know how they do. Yeah. Like my top line. Sometimes when I draw flat, it really messes with me. And I don't see it till I see John's overhead. And then I'm like, ah, there we go. That makes me happier. Just pulling that in. Never feel weird about like if something is bugging you in a painting and you're like, man, it could be cooler. It could be different. It could be better okay to listen to your artist's brain you know what i'm doing now is I, john has to be overhead so i can see and that's the equivalent of standing back and looking at the surface <laughs> well because when you're when you're working flat flat if you don't know this when you're working flat if you don't have a way of getting away from your work and looking at it on the wall or tilting it up like a, i've got this taped down right now but if you tilt it up is another thing that you could do but if you don't have the ability to do that, you can't really see it and things can get skewed or out of perspective yeah. really easily. So for me, John's overhead camera works really well to straighten me up. Katie Little says, what a fun little painting. And I agree. And then um, I'm sure Cad Red's about to drop the link again soon. And I, she'll let us know when we close it. Um, Stephanie soon. Willis says, some guy was giving another customer advice telling her about stiff brushes for acrylic. Mm, cool. Stiff brushes, I, I hope it was good advice because they work really well for acrylic. Yeah. Was that the advice? Stephanie Willis? I must know. Now I must know. Um, Darlene Reynolds says, please explain the difference between floating medium and glazing medium and why glazing works. Floating medium is a medium that improves blush brushability and helps in double-loaded, one-stroke painting. And uh, it's really uh, a similar product, not exactly similar, but a similar product to glazing medium. But this not only improves blushability, but brushability, it slows down the drying time and it allows you to glaze. Yeah, that's pretty good. So in this, if I have both, I'm always going to grab my acrylic glazing liquid gloss first. If I don't have both, I would use floating medium in a pinch, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Like, and if you've got a big bottle of floating medium, use that sucker up. Right. Unless you're like, well, I one stroke this time and I do this and then, you know, you're going to go through it. But other than that, you can totally use it up. Hmm. Now to do these roses, I'm going to start out. I'm going to take a little of my purple to my magenta and I'm going to definitely keep the paper towels because I don't want to make John die for them again. <laughs> And we're going to come over here and we're going to start this rose, right? And we're going to start it with this dark color, right? So we're going to come here and I'm making brick strokes. And what that means is I'm building this rose in blocky big strokes. Can I come over to the other side now? Yeah. Okay. We, oh, yeah, you, you totally can. Blocky big strokes. And I'm focusing the head of that kind of facing forward. When I have a bit of that in, I can kind of set it by going. You see how I'm doing? 
a blocking mm-hmm. strip. They make a little weavy pattern. I want a weavy pattern. I want it. Now maybe there's a little there's a little rose here. It's a bit of a bud, and so I'm gonna build a smaller one and its head's facing a little bit forward. I want one over here. Again, this is purple and magenta. It's just giving us a deep thing, and I want its face to be kind of facing that way. So I'm going to do the strokes forward there and then build it out. And while that's still wet, I can come in and get a little of my light color on here. These are the little tight part of the rose. Did I make that little pattern? Yeah. It was like stroke and then a little angle stroke and then one angle and then maybe kind of coming in the opposite angles, building up a little hatch. Gotta hatch them. Gotta hatch hatch a scheme. (laughs) Gotta hatch them all. Now I'm going to want to face this one this way. And I will make the petals bigger and more prominent facing the other way. Hmm. And the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add a lot more magenta into here. I might grab a little white just so it shows. And I'm going to come a couple places. I'm going to let John make sure he's with me. And I'm going to make petals that are peeking out. Yeah. You want your petals to peek out. It's really fun. Peek the petals. Hmm. Peek them. Peaky, peaky petals. I'm going to come up and peek a petal. Right is above the, the me- Is floating medium the same as... Well, I answered that just two okay. seconds ago. I just want to make sure. I just... <laughs> yeah. Did we ever find out about who was giving the customer service advice? I do not. I did not see that come through here. Oh, I understand. It came through again. So, yeah. Uh, I Hopefully you heard that, Karina, the answer about floating medium, about it uh, being different than glazing medium. But... A product that you could use in exchange in a pinch. So again, glazing medium is a much better retarder. In other words, slowing the paint down. And it's an amazing glaze. And it does improve brushability. Um, Floating medium does some definite improve of flow and brushability. But it doesn't necessarily slow the paint drying down in the same way. Mm -hmm. So if I had only a bottle of that, I would happily use it. But if I had a bottle of acrylic glazing liquid gloss, which is this one. I would use it first. They're just slightly different little products, but they're compatible. And by the way, they're compatible. Um, Kennedy Garcia says, I just got, uh, yeah, Garcia says, I just got your fan brush and bright and I love them so much. Cat's tongue has been sold out for so long. Mm. Well, Kennedy, enter the contest because we know they're sold out. And also we know people are kind of feeling the pinch. So enter the contest for your chance to win a cat's tongue. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to come here and build up my little brush here. And you can see this this making of roses through these distinctive and strong brush strokes. And that's what's really fun to me is yeah. that you can do that. You can just totally build a whole rose with that. And then I just come in and be like, and I just talk about the little face. And I'll come in and do a, a bigger talk about the face. But I find if I start here, it's kind of like a triangle. And then I come at opposite points of the triangle. And then I come at opposite points of that triangle. And it's amazing how it just builds rows. It's like a little pattern. Just playing the triangle. Different than cowbell. Hmm. I'm going to kind of make a little sideways facing rows here. When they're facing this way, where the bigger petals are, I just press that brush stroke down more. See how that goes? It just presses down more. And then this one, I want it to face the opposite direction. Opposite day over here. So I make the big, strong petals coming out that way, perhaps. And then this, this one can face in this way. And again, big, strong petals come that way. And then we're going to have a big boy at the bottom. Big boy. Big. He's a big boy. And his little face is facing up. So I build my strong petals. 
around that. Now, I love this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta and my cad red. And I'll get a bit of white into it. Oh, oh sorry. I'm going to come back over to the other side. I'm sorry, that. babe. Let's. There we go. Highlight some of our pattern. That's cat and magenta. I'm going to just bring that in there. I put in my first pattern, so it's super easy for me to see how I want to do it later. Just build up that rose. You can always come back with a, like white in there and be like, oh, let's highlight that. Mm. Now we're highlighting that. Ew. I can add a highlight to my little petals that I pulled out. I like those. A lot of fun. Again, that's a little of my cad red and a lot of my magenta and some white at the beginning. Reading that little side facer. Mm -hmm. And this one faces a bit forward, right? we go you can always come in with a little more white highlight some of these just paint and block roses define this front area here Add little highlights to that, and then I can come in and add some of those too. They just drama up. Mm -hmm. Just the drama is in the rows. Uh, moderator Cat Red says, "John, check your Skype." I'm going over there right now. Uh. Five minutes is up. Sure, for shall we close? Yeah, let's close. All right, so we're closing the contest, and we're going to announce a winner because we're kind of approaching the end of this, and I want to give the winner a chance to say that they're a winner. And I really appreciate everyone being here tonight, um, and I'm so glad that some of you really enjoyed the email, see that you knew this was happening, and I'll keep doing that. Um, I'll email you, and so we'll have the text notifications, which is the Art Sherpa to text number 33222. Mm, something and like that. then we'll also do the email, which will have your uh, reference, your materials, and your traceable in it as well, plus any links you need for contests. So, Tutu, all those. All right. Keep going. Pulling these fast colors around the big boy. Mm -hmm. And you can see when you do those highlights, it's like the rose just finds itself. I said, oh, what you mean? Or are you referring to my beautifulness? So I think the thing here, especially if you're really new to painting, that I, I want you to really embrace is that you will tend to be very forgiving of everyone else's rose. In other words, you'll tend to see in these roses everybody else's rose and somehow almost be uh, art blind to your own. So I would say even more than mastering the block strokes and these curve strokes, will be recognizing that your art is valid and that what you did is valid too. Mm. I think that's the hardest thing sometimes. Seeing your own validity in a situation. Now, easy, easy to be there for our friends, isn't it? Hard to show up for ourselves sometimes. And to add a little white there. 
some of these and you can see that's where like the highlights are created so magenta little cat red that one's a nice squish mm. Skishy. Skishy. Sometimes it'll happen and just get a nice squish and you'll be like, what? That's awesome. Back up. And you'll notice we're leaving the center of the roses kind of dark. Curve stroke. We're just pressing curve, pressing curve, pressing curve, mm. pressing curve. I think that needs some petals even coming down though. I like it. More rose petals, like more cowbell. Indeed. Just a little bit of that there. There we go. There it's coming along. It's amazing how it works, isn't it? It doesn't feel like it's gonna, and then it just really does. Mm -hmm. All right, do you have the announcement? We are working on it momentarily. Cheryl Sussman, Cheryl Sussman says, when I say magenta, do I mean Quinn magenta? Yes. Tonight's colors are Cad uh, Yellow Medium, Hytanium White, Doxazine Purple, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red. I did end up putting a little phthalo blue in there to darken the Waterfall, Burnt Sienna, and Thalo Green. So mm. that's where we're at. Okay. We have a winner. Oh, I'm going to put this down. I want to I hear the winner. Not going to paint till the winner is announced. Yes, I'm ready. It is Garcia Kennedy. I know Garcia Kennedy. That is oh. a name I recognize. Is it? Yes. I. Well, congratulations, Garcia I, Kennedy. I for sure saw. I've seen them, I think, twice today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Garcia Kennedy, are you in the house? Let's go see. I hope so. There's a little bit of a delay, so we'll just have to keep it. I'm going to keep painting roses, you keep and you painting. work that out and tell me if we find Garcia Kennedy. I will do that. I'm going to keep going. We will watch. I'm add a little bit. So, it's again, the Cad Red and the Quinacridone Magenta, a smidge, a small amount of my titanium white. This head is facing upwards, mm. so I'll start the center here. You kind of pick how the flower faces by where you start those tight central petals. <gasps> there we do. I see her. Congratulations, Garcia. Thank you for being here today. That and thank is you for awesome. joining us. Awesome. Perfect timing. Uh, hopefully, you gave us a good email on the form because mm -hmm. that's how we'll be contacting you. Uh, if you're suddenly worried about that, you can also reach us at support at the uh, moderator, moderator Cad Red will connect with you and we'll get your address details, which, of course, are not public. Don't put them in the chat here. No. No. I mean, in our group, let's be honest, they probably just send you cards and art supplies. That's how our community is. But <laughs> it's the internet, and we don't know every single person. So let's not put our addresses online. No. Like, I've ever taken that on advice. Like, remember the time I put our address fully online? I'm like, here's my address showing mm -hmm. on the show. That was so great. That's right, Kennedy Garcia. I thought you did say, I was like, Mods, like, I said it backwards, Kennedy Garcia. And she's like, yes, I watch every day and I love you. So I was like, that's a name I know. It's really great when you recognize names because I come to my live premieres. Well, they're not really live. They're premieres and they have a live chat. And I come and answer questions for people doing the five-minute tutorials. And then also I'm here and I see you guys here. And then I'm on Facebook and I got my watercolors. And I answer a lot of my own health, like questions, as many as I can get to. We get like 128,000 a month. So it's a lot. But... And I didn't just exaggerate that number. Like, that's a number I calculated. <laughs> but I get to as much as I can. So I start to recognize people in community and group and in places. And that's really kind of a nice thing. 
Yeah. I'm going to add my last little bit of kind of waterfall magic. I'm going to take my, my green and brown and a bit of white yellow kind of get together, making that little waterfall color that I had going there. Just want to make sure that I've got a nice little flow off the off the surface. I'll come back with a little white. Sometimes it's hard to flow the paint once it's dry, so you got to go back and kind of give it some color again. There we go, guys. I think we did wow. it. Wow, that turned out pretty fantastic. It's really all it is to that. And listen, this this paints on furniture really easily. If you master it, the rose technique goes anywhere and works with big brushes and little brushes. It goes great giant on a wall. You can do this very large, hmm. and it's stunning. And you can do this very small on a rock. It just works. It works on your cake. It works on your jeans. It kind of goes everywhere. I, I know I share it a lot, but the reason that I do is I know that once you can do it, you can rose all the things. And I want you to be able to rose all the things. All right. I hope that you guys are coming to the live stream tomorrow, which is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will send out an email in the morning with the reference picture, the traceable, the grid, and all the stuff that you might need and the materials. You can paint along with us and the link to the contest because if you didn't win a brush today, you can have a chance to try again tomorrow. And congratulations to our brush winner today. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do a thank you to um, uh, all of our Super Chat donators? Let's see what we do. Because they do, do help here. us. While John's doing that, I'll read Grandma's Miss Comment. Speaking of meeting the Art Sherpa, I have a friend near Hot Springs and she wants to know if you're going to do the Art Sherpa retreat away there again. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Well, John is thanking our fabulous uh, Super Chat contributors. Here's what's going on with the retreat. If you go to the page, you'll notice that we have dates again, and we have a few spots again. Um, so we are very lucky uh, in who we partnered with because we prepaid for everything. We didn't want people to, like, you know, uh, not have a retreat to go to. So we, we paid for the food. We paid for everything. We paid for the materials, and it's all literally, like, even the art supplies is there. And as things progressed with COVID, we, I think like everybody else, we just thought, well, it's not going to be that long. The hotel there didn't think go. it was going to be that long. Hi, Barbara Morrell. Thank you was, so much. That was from our last show, I think. Okay. okay. And um, so today, let, let me just, oh, yeah, go ahead. I just want to explain it. So it is open and we are October next year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, October next year. So we talked to the hotel and we moved the contract because we all feel like that's the best bet given how everything has gone down. If past history is we're sure we're going to do October, it's beginning of October because I know we had some community members that uh, uh, we're not going to be doing a Halloween thing. So it's the beginning of October. So it's just fall. Yeah. It's fall of it. So uh, you can check that out. And if you want to meet me, and do it, our retreat with me and paint with me and hang out with me for days and days and days. So you're so sick of me. You're super invited. And we would love to have Ooh, you. Rosie Monster. Oh, we know it jumped around that's, on me. That's so, yesterday psh, too, go. I think. Here you go. So this was today. This Stephanie was... Willis. That's right. Beginning of the show. I Thank remember. You. And then it was Pat, Miss Patty. Patty says Norman needs a raise. And that's because Norman isn't delivering texts. And then Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And Kathy, thank you. And Kristen. And thank you, Kristen. And then over here, I need to go over to the other magic sheet, which is this one. And, and today is... Doo -doo -doo. I have to scroll all the way down. There it is. There we had one. I don't see anything. Oh, this is text, 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 text. Text mm. is very generous. It is very. That's Mama the Moth one. wants to know what time of day is Lifebook. Um, so Lifebook doesn't really have a live feature, but um, she releases new stuff from there's 30 teachers. So even the taster session, she's got to be dropping like so many days of taster. And if you guys haven't checked it out, check the big email I sent out from the website. It's the big one. 
um, and it has a link to the free taster course. You can take a class with all 30 teachers for free. Does not obligate you to sign up for Lifebook 2021, but I am in Lifebook 2021. And if you'd like to do that, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, but basically it's like uh, during Lifebook, they just release once a week. Hmm. Um, and then there's a group, it's very well curated. It's about uh, uh, healing and well being and art and positivity. And I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Thanks, oh, Diane guys. says she'd be hard pressed to get sick of me. And then Cheryl Sussman says, not this October, next year, October 2021. Yeah, no, we did not want to risk this October. Like early on, we recognized that the situation was too unpredictable though if you are coming to the retreat please get trip insurance my mom got trip insurance and not only did i don't i don't, I don't know it like so her appendix ruptured on a cruise and she was out of country and the trip insurance like made sure she got into the correct hospital they talked to the doctors every day they called me every day they got her a flight back they did wellness checks and she walked away like her cruise being covered and no medical expenses and all she had to do was get better that's a terrible reason to need trip insurance usually people just like get a cold and can't go or there's a, a you get a job and you can't go something but always get trip insurance mm -hmm. I don't have one to recommend my mom might I, I don't have one to recommend but i would recommend that you have it i always grab it if it's offered because honestly i couldn't have gotten through what my with my mom being sick like that and being far away if i hadn't had the wonderful people calling me all the time john mm -hmm. i remember i was like freaking out so i definitely recommend it if you're going to come to the retreat but other than that we felt october 2021 mm -hmm gives the world a minute to work itself out. And I say this with no judgment. I don't know what it's going to take. I'm not a medical professional, but it seems like that's enough runway for them mm -hmm. based on previous runway, which we were more optimistic about. But now less so. But that's okay. That's okay. We're okay with that. We just want to make sure that we don't have to move the dates again because I like to just get together with some people in pain very much. Very much. All right. Face to face. With hugging. All right. No social distancing. Hugging. You're, we're we're going to. Uh, we got to go. We got to go. See you guys tomorrow. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.